Hello everybody. Today I thought we'd talk about anxiety and if you've been abused I'm sure you have anxiety. Before I found out about my abuse and started to remember everything I didn't actually even think that I had anxiety. I think that I was such an anxious child and even lately I looked in one of my books, my report cards when I was like in year five so I'm like I know nine or ten. The teacher writes Wendy is a very anxious child and I'm like yeah now I know why <laughs> Wendy was an anxious child but I didn't recognize it because I had it for so long and I'd learned to sort of live with it but once I realized what happened it was really good in a way because then I went oh I have anxiety and that was easy and then it was like oh that explains what's happening. I call it free floating it's always there and you feel wired Anxiety can really interrupt your life. It can make it very hard, whether you recognize it or not. If you've got it, it'll just get in the way of your eating, your sleeping, uh, your work, how you relate to people, your ability to do things. And I would get anxious about things that other people never got anxious about uh, and very over anxious at times. Of course, it was tied into back there, but I didn't realize that until now. And I want you to start looking at that too. You can make a list of things that you get anxious about that you think that most other people don't get so anxious about. It'll come to the point where you get such anxiety, it's almost like you're not in your body and you'll know that feeling I know. And you'll also feel some kind of terror around it. it can kind of Anxiety can go really into a very strong place to how you feel. This is from back there, it's from the abuse when you were being abused you got very anxious and it was very fearful and terrorizing and you were petrified and then afterwards you stayed in that kind of state of anxiety because you never ever knew when it was going to happen again and that's what we're talking about that perpetual that you're switched on all the time waiting for the bomb to drop so to speak you have survived this okay if you're listening to this you've probably grown up so you've survived this and now we just need to deal with the actual anxiety you can go to your doctor and there's medication for it. You can use herbal things. Some people go to hypnotherapy and that helps. I use emotional freedom tapping to tap it out and I find that really, really works for me but you have to work, see what works for you. And then find something to get rid of it. Uh, you can meditate as well if you're into that and release the anxiety that you feel. Like let it go, keep letting it go because you're telling your body to let it go now and whereas before you held on to it because it was like your early warning signal now being a little anxious you were actually switched on and you were waiting to protect yourself from being hit or whatever but now you don't need to do that anymore so you can switch that off and get rid of it anxiety is really dreadful and people don't talk about it and a lot of people have it sometimes it's just normal life anxiety but this is different this originated throughout the abuse and then stayed in your body and your mind afterwards. So now you might be in a lovely relationship or you live on your own, you feel safe and good but you still have the anxiety and it's from back there. Once you start working on getting rid of it your life will feel better. It's based in fear and terror, they're the two main emotions that I found. You can also work on your fear that you have and then your terror because I think the three are kind of linked together and one sets the other one off. It feels really good when you don't feel anxious and it feels really good when you can get your anxiety to come down and that's what you want to work at because that's part of being a survivor now. You're no longer a victim to it. Like you're taking control in a sense of it. Some therapists are really good to helping you handle it and teaching you breathing things and giving you different things to say or do. I think you could write it out too. I think you could get out your system by writing. So I'd do a little bit of journaling about I'm really anxious about this and that and it's ridiculous and I feel like I'm crazy because I get so anxious and I hate it and just let it all out, like just say it, you know, because that's how you actually feel and get it out. You will also have anxiety which will tip into like phobias that you'll be anxious about going to the doctor or having medical tests, you'll be super anxious about dentists, you might be anxious if you had to have a massage, you'll be anxious about standing in front of a crowd and speaking. 
because you might have had a verbal abuser you lived with, emotional abuser, sort of shut you down. So there's lots of types of anxiety and once you start working out what you get anxious about, where it is, then you can get rid of it and release it and get stronger. You can also do the alternate thing which is telling yourself that you're calm. I'm calm, I can do this, it is going to be fine. Because anxiety is a very negative experience and creates negativity around you. And if you change it into a positive affirmation, that can sometimes also help to sort of dilute it a little bit because it's quite strong. You'll have days when it's so bad you, you almost feel like you're going to throw up. And some people will actually do throw up with anxiety. They get nausea. These are the things that you need to look at to get better. And knowing where it comes from is kind of a relief because you just know you can get rid of it. Many, many people suffer this. Uh, many, many people don't talk about it. They just live that horrible, quiet, crazy internal world that they don't speak about and just go and head out into the world and try to act normal. But I'm doing these podcasts because you know what I'm talking about because you feel it too. And it's like a, a crazy wide feeling and it's like a shuddering inside of you. I sometimes f could feel the trembling inside of me and that was from the fear obviously that I still was holding on to, hadn't quite let go of and also that precipitated into having like quite strong anxiety to the point where you know <laughs> you just want it to go away don't you so work on it acknowledge it first now it comes mostly from the abuse if you're listening to these podcasts I would suspect that get some work around the abuse let it out verbalize it release it because the anxiety is caught into what happened to you so the more you express it however you want to do that the more it comes out because it's kind of trapped in there isn't it and then something will just trigger it that you have to do or someone does and you'll just get really anxious. Some people also get panic attacks. If you have one of those, you'll know. No one can tell you what they're like. You just have to have one really. But you'll have that heartbeat that you feel like your heart's beating outside your body and the breathing things. And that's also a sign to you that, you know, your anxiety needs to get handled now you need to find ways to get rid of it to release it you can do this you can live a less anxious life by just keep working at and nibbling away at getting rid of it and if you need to use things to quell it sometimes so you can actually just function that's okay too remember you're kind of damaged and uh, you're, you're suffering from an injury it might be emotional injury a mental injury but it's still an injury so it's okay to help yourself along. You're not being weak. You're just trying to get better. And then as you get stronger, you won't need so much and your anxiety should sort of lessen and lessen. I'm hoping you can lessen it because a life without anxiety or minimal anxiety is a really good life. It feels calm. There'll often be a lot of fear and anxiety where your solar plexus is, just above your belly button there. Uh, we hold a lot there so if you want to like think about releasing or putting your hands there put some do some raking on yourself to let it go sometimes you actually feel the prickling in your hand when you put your hands there you can feel or you can feel the anxiety sort of releasing because you'll do a lot of breathing deep breathing and letting it go look at it see if you can get rid of it your life will be just so so much better and it's also a way to survive the abuse without bringing it into this part of your life and healing basically healing so i'm sending you lots of love and lots of life and i hope you have a calm week <laughs> bye